Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another video, guys. Now today I am going to give you five ways to take your plyometric training to the next level. Please don't use them all at once, but we're gonna be talking about five techniques that you can use to increase the intensity of your power training. If you wanna know the science behind why all of this stuff works, let me know down below, but otherwise we're just gonna to stick to the practical ways that we can change up our power training and make it more difficult. As always, guys, please make sure to like and subscribe, yada, 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 yada please. Thank you. Now, the first way that we can change up our power training and make it harder is by increasing the incoming velocity, AKA we're going to increase the height or the speed at which we start our jumps. So this usually means changing what we do before we actually jump, AKA this is about the pre-strike or the receiving phase. We can increase this incoming velocity by doing things like depth jumps, or we can increase the height of the step or the box that we're jumping off of. And this just allows for more time for acceleration to act on us under the influence of gravity. If we were doing a plyometric drill with a medicine ball, then this might look like having the person who's throwing the ball to us throw it even faster to begin with. If you were doing a horizontal plyometric movement, then this might look like increasing the distance that you have to jump so that you're increasing that flight time. There's lots of different ways that we can conceptualize this, but you want to make it so that you're coming in faster. Have you got that? That was a lot of information very quickly. Hopefully some of those videos help explain. The second way that we can increase the intensity of our plyometric drills is to increase the exit velocity, AKA we wanna aim for something to do after the jump. The science behind this one is a little bit mm, meaning that it's actually probably better to focus on number one if we wanna increase the intensity, but you can still change up the stimulus by changing the exit speed. So let me tell you some ways that we can do this. We can give ourselves a minimum target to hit at the end of our jump. So for example, if we were doing a vertical jump, we could say you have to hit 40 inches or you could try and clear a hurdle after you do a jump. That way you have something to aim for and it's gonna change how you apply the force and how you move upon that exit phase. Now, number three is to increase the mass of the body that's going to be moved, which is us. This is the same with all other aspects of resistance training, but we can use it for plyometric training as well. The only caveat to this one is that you don't wanna add so much weight that the movement that you're doing becomes compromised. So if you're doing a jump squat with a weight on your back, but then when you're doing it, you nearly fall forward, you lose your balance and it just looks uncoordinated, then you've probably added a little bit too much weight. You could also play around with adding mass to only certain parts of the movement. So for example, you could do the lowering portion of the jump or the counter movement with extra weight. You could then drop it and then you could jump up with no weight. So it changes up the eccentric load. Then that could be pretty interesting. So you can play around with which part of the jump or the bound or the plyometric drill that you actually want to be loaded. There's also different optimal weights if power is your end goal. So for example, in the jump squat, I think it's about 30% of your one rep max is usually when we're the most powerful. If you have anything higher than that, then you're probably not gonna be doing your fastest. It's not very heavy and it really doesn't need to be, but adding mass as always can be a great way to make things harder. Now, number four in the list of ways to increase the intensity of your plyometric drills is to decrease the points of contact or AKA to go single limb. What I mean by this is to change up your exercises. So instead of using two limbs, you'd use one. If you do a jump, try landing on one leg instead of two. You could even try taking off from one leg instead of two and doing a hop instead of a jump. You could then land on the contralateral or the opposite leg, or you could land on the ipsilateral or the same leg. Again, there's lots of different ways that we could do this, but this way, all of the forces that are acting on our body have to be absorbed through one limb instead of two. Because we're doing everything on one limb, it also puts more forces on us from the transverse and the frontal planes. And this kind of exposure might mean that we're better equipped to be able to handle loads coming at us from different angles or unexpected ways. It makes the control of the movement much more challenging. So it's definitely something to give a go. Instead of pushing a medicine ball with two arms, you could push it with one. Literally the list goes on. Now the last tip I have for you in terms of increasing your plyometric intensity is to shorten the amount of time that 
that you spend on the ground or shorten your ground contact time. This increases the rate at which you have to generate momentum. If we reduce the time available for force production, then the exercise becomes harder. You could do this by adding a reactive component or something like that. But I will say this doesn't always increase the intensity because sometimes when we shorten that ground contact time, then the power that we're able to produce or the force that we're able to put down into the ground is less. So it might be harder mentally if we add that little bit of reactivity to it. But in terms of physically, it might be a little less. Again, it'll really depend on the situation. But you could do this by changing up the type of drill. So instead of a jump, you might want to do a bound or something like that. Instead of just a hop on one leg, you might want to do little pogos. It's anything to change up the stimulus and to keep us continuously adapting and improving our power. Again, another really short video there, guys, but I hope some of those video clips, I've linked them all below so you can go have a look at the original videos if you want. But these are just different ways that we can change up the stimulus. I hope this helped everybody. As always, guys, please make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, drop them down below and I will see you all next time. Ciao.